not make it on my own. It was by the grace of Yahweh that I made it through faith because I had some very trying times and it wasn't easy at all. And life has been greatly changed for me. I don't even see life like I used to no more. But I'm happy and thank God for a constitution like we have in this country where a man can get due process through people like the Emerson Project, Ms. Moore, Ms. Julie, our head DA, Mr. Watkins, these students, and everybody, Judge Susan Hawk, uh, and people that work so hard for the right thing to be done. And this is what really helped me and Mr. Jackson because it gave us hope, even when we thought there would be no hope. This is what gave us hope and what's got us here today with y'all. And Wayne. it's very inspiring. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to interrupt, sir. That's all right. Are there other folks that you know you came encounter with that you believe are like yourself? Uh, yeah. I know for a fact. Could you yeah. tell us about that? I know that? for a fact there are. I've talked to them, uh, different men that is in prison, and a lot of them had to comp out to cases that they knew that they was innocent on because they was afraid to face a jury. So they had to cop out even though they was innocent. So me and Mr. Jackson, we really refused, you know, some things to cop out even though we knew we was innocent. But when you stand alone and you feel that you won't get the proper representation by a court-appointed lawyer, I'm not saying all court-appointed lawyers are bad, but you will not get the proper representation if you are poor and you don't have the funds and the means to get the right uh, representation when you come in this courtroom, like Judge Susan Hawk said earlier. And, you know, I'm really grateful that DNA testing and the science of DNA to prove that we are innocent, even when someone else say that you are not innocent. But we knew in our heart, and we thank God. When did you hear that? I'm sorry, Darren. That's all right. Uh, when did you hear that uh, DNA might be available in your case, and were you in prison when that happened? And oh, so yes, sir. What, what's your reaction when you it hear was, that? It uh, was in 83, and that's when wow. they started the DNA. Wow. We mm -hmm. filed for a DNA test, and I think they punished me Mr. Moore. But the jury denied it because they said that I was identified. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I filed for appeal, which I never got a response from. And, they, and after a certain length of time, you will deny that, right? You know. But when I got out, excuse me, when I got out, I refiled. After I filed on classification and parole board, and made them give me a parole, which I wouldn't have paroled until 2021. But after I filed on classification and parole board, they uh, they granted me a parole. And when I got here, I refile for a DNA test. And uh, they mistaken me when I was in the halfway house. They called uh, uh, Raymond Johnson. <laughs> and then uh, later at night, she said, say, uh, Mr. Johnson, she said, you have a piece of paper here that somebody you should get in touch with. So I called Miss Michelle Moore. She said, I thought you said you didn't want that. I said, no, ma'am, that was somebody else. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to answer the phone. And uh, she got started on it, and she investigated everything. And she, uh, you know, I'm so grateful to her. And, and it looked like it was just meant for her because I, I, that piece of paper, they could have thrown it in the trash, and I'd have been still stuck. But it was there. And Ms. Michelle Moe got immediately on that and uh, gave me the DNA test and told me, so you know if, you, if, if this, you it could come back positive, you know, you might get sent back to penitentiary. I said, I ain't worried about that. <laughs> I said, all I want to get this DNA test so I can prove my answer. And, you know, and, and they got James back, and he took his DNA, and then all this started happening. If it don't be for Chelmo, Miss Judy, and, uh, and, and, and the head DA, and uh, all the rest of them guys, uh, we would be in trouble. Well, it, 
there was no such thing as DNA when they were prosecuting you as no, well. No, so, no. So I, I want to give credit to DNA in terms of exoneration. Yes, sir. But I want to talk about this process for you all when you came into this courtroom 30 years ago with alibis, with witnesses talking about where you were, and how a process, police, prosecutors, witnesses, I keep hearing you talk about witness testimony. It seemed to me that the entire system in this room put you in prison. Well, uh, when we yes. came, when we yes. when we first yes. got in courtroom, uh, the the, the uh, lawyer, we had we had five or six witnesses could prove where we were, and they was there, but the DA dis discredited their ability. Uh, you know, like one, I was I, at the time I was remodeling homes at back then, and. Uh, I was, I was working, I, he, one of the guys called to set up a job to me, he called to my house. But this, that time they had house phones. And the DA asked him, so, how you know that uh, he was at the house? And the man said, I called him myself, and I know what time, because I was serving him a job, and I know he was there. But after his testimony, when they argued, he said that this man was old, and he allowed to say anything, he didn't know what he was talking about. You know, and they, they, back then, uh, I think the real thing was just getting a convicted, and they didn't care whether you was innocent or, or not. Your, your not sense your of sense that as well, right. sir, uh, it takes me back to that court proceeding. Uh, yes, sir, I, I kind of felt like when I seen the jury, what is so important in this town and city is the jury. and. When the jury is listening, then that a person get up that's so distraught about something that has happened to them, they have a tendency to go along with that without really being able to know how to look at the facts. Because a person can become so emotional. And these people are not trained like, say, the judge and other people, or like you people, to try to understand these things. And they go on an emotion with the victim, and they convict you. And uh, we got tried with an all-white jury in both our cases. There was no minorities. And that's another thing I feel that should really be addressed in this city. He talked about the process. He talked about the process. I'm, I'm uh, 67. 67? You talked about the process working for you. You praised the justice system. But it's the same justice system that put you incorrectly away for decades. Yes. So there's a disconnect for me. Uh, back then, the justice system was different. Now, now since Mr. Craig Washington got it, mm -hmm. uh, he, and the DA impact and everything, he's trying to correct what they were doing back then. And, and I can see the change. I can see the change, you know. Uh, and But if you give to something, then you have to suffer the punishment. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like now that you would get a little better opportunity. That was my next question. Do you think things have changed enough that your situation might not occur again? Now, I know my name, Chris. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, you know, because people, people's up, you know, they live their own life. They take their own charge, and they do what they think they can get away with, or what they think is best. But uh, I ain't never been this. I learned. I've I been in trouble before, and I ain't been no angel. But uh, I, I got enough of all that, you know. Do you think How are things gonna change for you now? Which what comes next? Well, I'm on. I got it. My goal is to give me some type of business. I do jury, gold and silver, and I work leather. And uh, I'm gonna get some type of business. I, I'm gonna invest my money right. You have a commercial spot going. Yeah, you got a, you got a commercial right now. How does that change your life? What's, what's next for you? Um, that's it's very complex, but at the same time, very good. Uh, and to know that we still, even in this country, even though things like this happen, there are still good people that do exist. And this has greatly changed my life and it inspires me 
to do the same, to go on with my life now and try to do good to others. Both of you have, uh, to both of you, you have about 10 former exonerees uh, behind you. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are plans to network with them, to, to befriend them, to, to get together with them. Uh, with, with them together, what, what changes do you, do you hope what changes do you hope that you two can help make happen with the cooperation of your former uh, exonerees uh, to, to enhance the criminal uh, justice system? Um, well, one thing I would like to do is maybe with these other brothers and people like uh, that work for these type of things to happen together um, is to inspire more people like people today we have here and um, to try to get more young people more interested uh, in due process, you know, to see that justice be done for everyone, no matter what side to track you from, justice should be done for everybody. And this is one of the main goals. I want to work with my brothers and other exonerees about uh, to see that this be done because I also want to dedicate this day to those that was innocent but died in prison. They didn't have opportunity to have a DNA testing. Those that went on before us, even those that I knew that was innocent. See, this is a miracle for me and Mr. Jackson, these other brothers, uh, because this happened in a time, you know, in a day where technology uh, is very great when it's used the proper way. And that's what I want to continue to inspire and do and work with my brothers and to help those who need help, those who need to be heard that are innocent. Mr. Watkins even said this morning that essentially he's sitting on this platform alone. That in Austin